Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time we're going to play with another heat kit. This one is a frequency counter model IB1103. Yes, it's in Nixie tubes. I didn't power this up yet, but I think you should be able to see the eight Nixie tubes. And there's even another one neon bulb here so yeah that is nine digits almost right so this frequency counter is from 1973 and it should be able to do 180 megahertz that is very very fast for 1973 i want you to look at the little details down here so we got different time base settings like that one millisecond 100 millisecond and one second and then we got multipliers of course times one is multiplier disabled and then you got three multiplier settings uh, times 10, 100, and 1,000, of course. So the multiplier is actually a phase-locked oscillator and uh, a divider that goes back to the phase compare. And uh, then you can select the three different outputs from the three different uh, decade counters. And this way you get an output that is uh, faster than your input, actually. So that, that was a good old normal way to do this in the old days of uh, frequency counters and this is a good way to get high resolution and uh, you don't need to wait times 10 seconds 100 seconds and 1000 seconds to get all this resolution right you just multiply your input that is really really cute we got a little problem with the on off switch can't go back so i need to look at that and also i really want to inspect this before i power it up it is quite heavy for its size 3.6 kilos and the mains connector is something really really weird and special this is about half the size of this tiny tiny one that was also from this time, um, you've seen this on HP equipment, uh, probably on this video you could say, oh, this is probably this HP one, but it is not. It is a lot smaller. You can see it here on my finger. It is that small. So that means I don't have a mating connector for this one. That is so annoying. So I need to figure out how to uh, power it up. That will be the two 5 volt linear regulators. And external, ex uh, internal or external clock oscillator, it just say input. So you don't really know what kind of input it is we're talking about. But I can reveal this is one megahertz input. So it's not this official standard we use today where we use 10 megahertz. Oh, by the way, the internal um, crystal oscillator is running at four megahertz. And then they divide it by four and then they use it in the time base. It's a little bit funny that you don't have internal, external, I mean, you could output uh, the one megahertz, right? And then sync it to other uh, instruments, but that's just not possible. This is only input, no matter what. And this is a thing that I would have done uh, if it was uh, me building this one uh, initially. I would definitely have made it so that uh, this would have been an input-output depending on if you're using internal or external. I mean, why not? So here's how to disassemble this uh, cabinet. See those side panels here? You just loosen the two screws and then they uh, release the two side plates. Or they are U-shaped like that and they're just held in place by pressure from this one. So that is uh, quite funny. The thickness of the plates there are just a little bit more uh, than this uh, groove here is uh, height. Uh, so yeah, that is just how it works. It's a really funny way to do it. 
I, I wanted to show you guys this uh, power connector. I am still a little bit lost about what the heck is that one called? Because this the normal belt and connector um, used for HP uh, equipment, as you see here. I mean, I don't know how how can I show that, but it is there's a big difference. And this one is quite small and compact, but this one is even smaller, right? And it's clearly not that type. Let's uh, let's look a little bit inside this unit. The first thing you see is the mains transformer here. Let's look a little bit inside the unit. I pulled out the four circuit boards so we could easier easier see what is going on in here. There's a funny thing that I see here around the transformer. I believe this is the guts of a capacitor. You can clearly see a capacitor kind of blew up in here some years ago. And that is of course the, the power supply. That is the only board that is only a single-sided board. See, so which one of the capacitors was the one? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we can... Yeah, it's, it was over in the left side, so it was, was probably one of these. So as they're still exactly the same type, so... Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, it's a very simple power supply, by the way. High voltage is made only with one capacitor and one diode, and that's it. And then there is a double a, yeah, bridge rectifier and some capacitors, and uh, this makes about plus 8 volts that goes to two 5-volt regulators that drives all the logic that is running on 5 volts. And then there is a 32 volt power supply that is currently limited using a transistor and a little sense transistor that measures the voltage drop over a 4 ohm resistor. So the funny thing is with this 32 volt uh, single supply is they use two Cena diodes at 16 volts from ground to make this uh, center located, so they call it a plus minus 16 volt supply. So what happens if mains voltage goes a little bit high? Yeah, you're gonna make those two signal diodes very warm. That is a funny, funny way to make this uh, power supply. And I will of course uh, show you uh, the schematic here so you can see what I mean with the two Cena diodes and the current protected, uh, current regulated uh, 32 volt, actually. So I think that is a, yeah, a quite funny power supply. Those uh, connectors here, I don't know if I should cry about those. Um, they look really, really old and ugly, but they do make a very good solid contact. And uh, as you can see here, see? Oh! There is a really good and stable feel. The circuit board here is um, almost straight. <laughs> well, well, this is the input board. And the input board, there is a connector here, RCA connector, used for a 180 megahertz. So this, um, Cable go directly to the front BNC, so that's how it works. All those uh, signals are, of course, supply voltage and uh, outputs from this uh, input board. It also contains some prescalers, and uh, the ground for this board is here. This is also the pin that is used to steer all the circuit boards. You can see them here. They are nice and long, and those hold the circuit boards nicely in place. 
I don't know if you can imagine this uh, making this by hand back in 1973. The sockets are single pin sockets like that. Really? So this took a million hours to um, to do. I'm not super happy about this type of socket. But man, it would have required a million hours of patience to get this up and running. So that yeah, that was the input board. Then we have as the second board here, we have the oscillator, the time base. So the oscillator is running at 4 megahertz, as you see here. And then the output is divided by 4 to make 1 megahertz. And then this module is uh, making the different timings for the different uh, measurement um, time that we got here. Only one capacitor here, and then this one is a little... Uh, I think this is a 100 picofarad or something like that. It is a timing constant. But where are the decoupling capacitors? Here is only one capacitor on the power rail for this entire circuit board. I'm a little bit impressed about that. Today would have, we would have seen quite a lot of capacitors here. So the last board here, and this is this tricked me a little bit, by the way. I don't know if you can see this, but those holes we got here, that was um, actually a shielding box around the PLL for the multiplier. So there's a very, very cool multiplier here that can multiply by 10, 100, or 1,000. And of course it contains of a voltage controlled oscillator and then it is compared to the input and then it's controlling uh, the the output is divided by yeah 10 100 and 1000 and uh, that makes the multiplier work i really hope this one works and all the decoupling capacitors on this unit is tantalium really if you see this here is pretty scratched at the top, and that is because it touches this switch and the back side of this circuit board, the pins that sticks out here, touches this piece of aluminium here. So I'm not super happy about this. So what I want to do is remove this uh, tantalium capacitor so this board can be moved a little bit, probably glue a little piece of plastic on the back side to uh, prevent this board from going all the way. Yeah, it, it, it tricked me uh, about this uh, the missing shielding because of the, the pictures that you see uh, of this unit. It really looks like it was this unit with this metal case, but mirrored like that. So I thought, oh my God, they mounted all the units completely wrong but it's because the the pictures they were really really bad quality black and white pictures so i couldn't really uh, figure this out before i paid a lot more attention to the tiny little details of the ic's and then they were definitely mounted uh, correctly so here's the main counter board and this one consists of eight seven four ninety decade counters and then eight four bit latches so of course when it's done counting it latches the output and then the out, uh, the latches goes to nixie tube drivers and uh, they of course take the four bit bcd input and drive the 10 cathodes those drivers also consist of some signal diodes on the cathodes and this prevents uh, ghosting and uh, make sure the cathodes goes uh, correctly on and off. So that's high voltage uh, decoders. As you can see, we got, of course, also eight Nixie drivers, and that means this uh, counter here is uh, dry directly driven. So there's no multiplexing, and that means they are um, very, very bright, those Nixies, and to make them less bright, 
they're of course running on a 100 volt only oh yeah uh, as you see the um, we've got six indicators three on each side there are originally bulbs but you can see here one is a led and they just changed the one that was defect to an led and left the other two don't fix anything that is not broken maybe and it's the same here i really hope all those bulbs works because it gives a really cool uh, <laughs> old kind of style uh, when they do turn on and off this afterglow and all that so I feel I'm ready to power this up since everything is nice and fine and that will be the two windings on the primary side of the transformer and they, as long as they are in series that means I am ready for my kind of mains voltage range here um, yeah look at that fuse oh no maybe I should change that and clean up a little bit look what I done I changed this big titanium capacitor it was just way too high so it was touching the switch and it was also pushing the board towards this metal look at the safe distance I got now I also mounted another capacitor here on the back not because I wanted a another capacitor on the supply rail not that it matters because we got all those capacitors here but just to make sure that the board is now nice and straight and that is exactly what this capacitor can do because it got exactly the correct diameter <laughs> perfect use for that one so now I feel I'm ready to power it up so I feel I'm ready for the first power up let's first connect mains and of course nothing happens and of course it blinks like absolutely crazy let me try another shot of time here okay i can probably camouflage the blinking a little bit oh i think i know why it is blinking it's not running on dc <laughs> oh no did you remember the power supply oh we gotta we gotta show you guys this on him we gotta measure this i think there's definitely something with the with the power supply design that is something we can easily fix the tubes are not perfectly straight this one bends a little bit but i do see a gate that goes on and off and this is one second multiplier is off and let's crank on one kilohertz and see if yes what kind of lock is that so if this is one kilohertz okay let's try the multiplier 10 times and then it it works the multiplier works and of course it took a little bit extra time because we needed to have a lock on the pll did we see a, a lamp Oop, why are you doing that let's turn it off okay so when you go into multiplier mode the first second there should be a lamp here that says something about unlocked let's have a look yes it was a very far, fast little blink and that is the unlock for the pll and then again see that lamp works isn't that fascinating we can get two extra decimals on one kilohertz just by the multiplier can we also do yes we can also do that so the times 1000 also works <laughs> i'm so impressed about this the way that they did this instead of using a reciproc uh, counter like anybody else would have done so this is um yeah okay let's go back let's go back um no multiplier so this is one second and then this is 100 milliseconds and this is what is that one millisecond so that means megahertz now we are in megahertz mode and we have of course enabled all the dividers correctly so now we can crank up the frequencies here okay let's go for one megahertz that count that is counting correctly 
Okay, let's crank it up to 10 megahertz. And I really like this speed. So that's super fast. Oh, look at that. 100, yeah. Okay, let's just crank it up in tens. It is specified for 180. That is it. That is the specifications. And that is exactly 50 years ago, isn't it? Since this one is from 1973. So let's crank it up to 200. So where is the limit? Every time you hear a little oopsie doopsie, 240, it goes fine. And then, okay, so 240. <laughs> that is so nice. So there's a lot of margin on the speed here. So that was megahertz, kilohertz. Even that works as well. And then we can go to hertz. So all the lamps seems to be working. And this extra one here is also working. It is a little bit too bright for my taste, but that is just how it is. We should probably move it down a little bit. But wow, it really truly works. So try and see here the anode voltage. So here we go. Look how much it blinks. It's absolutely crazy. I'm running at uh, 60 hertz a shutter, by the way. So this is, of course, why we have interference, because I live in 50 hertz land and my camera is set for 60 hertz shutter so it's nice and smooth but look at that this is our nixie voltage it goes from zero to um, 200 and the average is 100 how ridiculous and that is of course due to the way that the power supply is wrongly made but we can do better <laughs> here's what i've done now the voltage is, yeah, okay, you can still see it ripples a little bit, but it is, of course, a lot better. I could not just change the diode and the capacitor, because it's actually a voltage doubler. Oh, man, how simple is that? So, let me show you what I've done. Yeah, we can just pull it up. The voltage is low enough here you go so here's the diode this is the high voltage output this is the ac input for, uh, from the transformer that goes of course via the capacitor right and then there is a diode pointing from ground and then this one this points goes positive and then zero positive and zero because of the diode obviously right but that is a double voltage compared to what is on the um, transformer right and this is this double voltage is what i need so now i got a diode to the output and here's the output of course i'm gonna see if i can make this a little bit more beautiful well here we got the output capacitor and that is ground. So that is how to do it. And now it's running on DC. And did you see? The numbers are not flickering anymore. Of course, it's not a problem if you're not um, using a camera, but I am. <laughs> I really hate this flickering stuff. That's the whole idea about direct driven Nixies. I think it has gotten a little bit out of hand. But anyway. <laughs> I needed access to all the anode resistors so I could lower um, the tube current. And this is, of course, what I've done. I just opened all the resistors in one end. They're 10K. And then I added a 33K in series. And they're more than bright enough with a much lower current. And that is, of course, okay. Now we are running on a pure DC. And as you can see now, ooh. No flickety flickety at all. It is purely DC. And this is, of course, how it should have been. Maybe I will fix this LED. Look how dim that is compared to the bulbs. So that is, of course, how it is. All those bulbs look. They're insanely bright. 
that is probably due to this plastic here in the front look the plastic really really dim the way that uh, where the text is oh, there's another little few things that I wanted to fix now it's out anyway and that is this plate is not in the center so it's uh, not flat on the metal here and also the two BNC connectors are not mounted like I would like them to be but uh, yeah I think it is uh, time to say thank you very much for watching I will play a little bit more with this but I think this is a good place to end the video thank you very much for watching see you around